So we're in our second week of doing this, this series uh, that we talk about being in different seasons of faith. Um, and, and last week, Lee taught on those seasons of lament, of just, of just being down and just needing to cry out to God. And so when we are thinking about what other seasons are there, what other, what other time periods can you be in in your, in your faith walk, in your faith journey? And so we wanted, Kate and I wanted to teach tonight and describe those, those time periods in which you kind of feel like in between. Um, and, and maybe you've never felt that before, but, but we've kind of set this up knowing that there will be times when you do feel like this. Um, and so when we are talking about, um, about this idea of that sometimes you feel really, really close to God. Um, and then there's also times where you feel really, really distant and maybe far away from God and maybe even angry with God. And so we started to kind of look uh, through scripture, through the Psalms, to find uh, where are some examples of that. Um, and so we stumbled upon uh, Psalm 13. And Psalm 13, um, if it's up on the screen, you can see it. There we go. All right. So Psalm 13 starts with, with this line, long enough, God, you've ignored me long enough text message. What was that? It's God with two Ds. Yeah, God with two Ds is a psalm thing. It really psalm emphasizes yeah. God. God duh. Duh. Um, it's like Davis on it's Sunday mornings song, where he you know, really he's... emphasizes God. Duh. Uh, anyways. Yeah, continue um, though. So long enough, God, have you ignored me? So from this one, this one extreme, and then the psalm ends like this. I'm singing at the top of my lungs. I'm so full of answered prayers. And if you look at that, there is, and I mean, and for me, someone that, like, I, I love to kind of nerd out and study on theology stuff, and I love documentaries and see, like, the details of things that goes on. And if I read something like this where it starts with, long enough, God, have you ignored me? You won't even listen to one prayer that I have, is the feeling of the psalmist, to ending with, I am so full of answered prayers, which sounds like, in my mind, like, every answer is, is or every prayer has been answered. Like, for me, I'm, I'm wondering, what happened in this time period? And so tonight, that's what Kate and I want to teach on, is, is what happens in this time period in between that could possibly take you from how, uh, oh Lord, how long will you forget me and ignore me, to I am so full of answered prayers. So we want to examine that and, and maybe try to answer some of those questions. And, and as we're teaching, uh, um, this is going to be the last challenge that we have for you tonight. So spoiler alert on this, but as we're teaching, I want you to consider maybe where would you find yourself? I'm going to rewrite this since someone erased it. Yeah, I erased it. Kate wrote it. I didn't know that that's where we wanted to start. This is my fault. <laughs> So we would wonder, where are you? And when Kate and I were looking at this, we, we kind of processed through a few questions that we felt like we needed to ask if we were going to find out what happens in the middle. So um, as we first started like talking around, I don't know if you've been in my office, but there were like three whiteboards all over the place, right, on this one wall. And so we just started. We drew this line and we're like, okay, like in a relationship, like there are two people, right? So if uh, Catherine and I were in a relationship together, and something like goes wrong, right? Maybe we're in a fight or like we're not like, clicking as normal, like something is wrong. And so normally when you're in a relationship and something goes wrong, you kind of think about what the other person is doing, right? You kind of blame it on the other person. Like, oh, like my mom's just having a bad day. That's why she just yelled at me. So our first question was, um, is our first uh -huh, question. You erased it. Ha ha ha, you're right. You're so right, Adam. Always, I hear that daily. So our first question, is it God, right? So we started talking about like, if in a relationship, if we are feeling like God is forgetting us, right? If that's our feeling, like, is it God in this relationship? And so we kind of started talking and we're like, okay, what do we know about God? What do we know? So starting at the very beginning, we know God created us, right? So God created us in his image, male and female, he created us and therefore, we have a little bit of the image of God in us, right? Okay, so we know that about God. The second thing is in, um, in 1 John, it talk, kind of talks about that God is love. 
And we see that all over the Bible and Corinthians and all that stuff. But especially in 1 John, we see that God is love. And I don't know about you, but when I think about love, like I don't think of like a broken relationship, right? I think of this like pouring out, this like I'm your best cheerleader, like I'm with you through good times and the bad. And I see, if we see that God is love, that's, that's kind of okay, kind of a relationship sort of thing. So a third thing we kind of thought about um, in John 14 is that God cares for us and basically sets us up for success. Um, and so I'm gonna write this real quick. And so when we talk about when God cares for us, we kind of think, okay, like God sets us up, God cares for us, we're made in God's image and God is love. So if all of these things are true, I know it says this in the Bible, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, we are sought after. We are like important, right? And to, to God in God's eyes, important, I don't even have to spell that anymore. I've written that so many times. We're sought after, we are important. We, like, God always chases after us. We just sang the song, there's no mountain. Uh, is he making fun of me? I was oh. just looking at the board. My angle is different. Continue. Well, there's no one else at your angle, so you're fine. Um, so we are prioritized, we are sought after. God is always seeking us. So when we look back at this and we look at our relationship, is it God? Like, maybe not. Um, and so what we want to do with this is ask more questions and this kind of stuff. Um, but if we look at it, normally in this relationship, if we are feeling forgetful, it's probably not God. So the next question that we ask then is, if it's not God, is it us? In which, this can be kind of a tough question, because I think it's, I mean, obviously it's personal, it's us. Like, am I at fault in this? And I think for this, we had to kind of, again, go back to the creation story and look. And the reality is, when we look at creation story, we look at Genesis, we realize and know that we are created uh, perfect. We lived perfectly in, and when I say we, I mean humanity in general, lived perfectly in the garden, but then there was the fall, right? We fell out of, out of the perfect image in which we were created into a fallen image and thus have this tendency, this, this bentness towards sinning. And I, I think of uh, the, um, the line, uh, the, the prone to wander uh, line in um, Come Thou Fount, right? Um, Lord, we feel it, we know that we should stay on the true path, but we are prone to wander. And I think that's the fallenness that we've kind of been created into, is that, uh, that, that bentness towards falling away, towards wandering away <clears throat> from God. And so sometimes I think we would, look, we would look at the history of people. We look at people like Peter in the Bible, right? Peter who followed Christ around, who lived with Christ, was one of his best 12 friends and hung out with him constantly. And then Jesus was like, you're going to deny me. Peter's like, there's no way that I would ever do that. Peter denies him three times, exactly like Jesus says. And so we have this tendency sometimes to fall short, to, to distance ourselves knowingly from God. So is it us? Um, it could sometimes be us. Yeah, right? but Adam, like, if, okay, all of these kids in here, right? So they're here on Sunday night. Some of them are here on Sunday morning. Most of them so I kind of think about coming on Wednesday nights anyway. Like, they're all pretty good Christians, right? I mean, they pray most some every of them. day. Well, back row, like, shh. Um, anyway, <laughs> so if they think about it, and they're going through, and they know what to do. So if... If I know we're prone to wander, I know we're fallen, but if we're doing the right things, what if something goes wrong, right? So on the like little sub portion of visit me, um, what if? What if something's not working? What if something like is going wrong? Um, and I think we have to go back to the Psalm on this one because um, near the end it says, take a look at me, God, my God, I want to look life in the eye. And in the next couple lines, I've thrown myself headlong into your arms. So if we look at the psalmist who literally goes from, oh Lord, how long will you forget me? You've ignored me long enough to I'm full of answered prayers. These are some of the things that the psalmist, he or she, is singing about and is talking about. So when he or she is talking about, I want to look life right in the eye. So have you ever actually looked life in the eye? Like really take in yourself in and go, okay, here's what I do every day. I want to pray right? That seems simple enough. I want to, you know, encourage someone, give a smile to someone. I want to read my Bible for, you know, two minutes or so. And then you kind of end the week and you're like, man, like I'm tired. 
I'm grouchy. I don't feel like anyone's around me. I feel like I'm being forgetful and all of these things. But I've done all of these things. So the first thing is looking life in the eye, really looking, taking a critical eye, making a fearless inventory of what you're doing. Maybe you were present here tonight, but maybe you're not really like present. You know what I'm talking about? Like um, something is super stressful, like you're super tired, like you don't want to go to school tomorrow, but like you're not really here. So maybe part of that fearless inventory is you going, okay, like physically I'm here, but maybe I need to tune in a little bit more when we talk about this in small group. Or maybe during the week, you're pouring out love for other people, but you're not filling yourself back up. You're not taking the time to go, okay, like I need to spend time in scriptures. I need to honestly give everything over to God, whether that's the itty bitty things or the really big things. I know in my life, like all the little bitty things sometimes fall away after a little bit and I have to go out and chase that. I have to go out and go, okay, like I need to spend more time in nature. I don't need to just sit on my couch and binge watch Sabrina. Like I, I have to go out and chase that, right? Is that out now? Yeah, oh, well, yes, the first season is. Right. Next season's coming next year. So I already checked that. Um, so looking life directly in the eye, looking at your life critically and going, okay, maybe I'm not doing everything I can. And so the second part is throwing yourself headlong into God's arms. And I'm, I'll write this up on the board while I'm talking in just a second. But throwing yourself headlong and going, okay, you know what? I gotta be bold. I gotta spend like 30 minutes. I gotta spend an hour a day doing the things I know I need to do. And for some people, an hour is a super long time after you get finished with school, after you know, try and eat something, after you go to sports practice, band practice, after you do homework. Like, where do we fit God in? And it's not so much about fitting God in, but rather being bold and say, you know what, this is what I need in order to keep my life and keep me in line and filled. So running headlong and looking life directly into the eye. Um, and so if we can admit it to ourselves, like, you know, maybe I haven't been the best sort of person this week, then of course we can admit it to God, but maybe then we can start sharing it with those around us and seeking for help as well. So if it's not God, and it's not really me, and what if something goes wrong, well, maybe we need to take a closer look. So I'm gonna write that real quick. And so the last kind of thing we talked about was, <clears throat> is it something else? And I think this is really where, um, it's kind of a combination of the, these other things in us. In that, I think, if you look at the world around us, like, it's so easy to fill ourselves with these other things. If, if we go back to what I said a few minutes ago and said that, that part of human nature, part of who we are is that fallenness, like that wasn't just me that experienced that or just Kate or just a few of you. It was all of humanity that experienced that fallen nature. And so the culture and the world around us like has this fallenness about it. And so when we look around, like many times you would realize if you did that kind of self in inventory that, that Kate kind of, whoa, it flipped. Um, I that Kate just talked about. Every time we've done this. <laughs> I know. Every time it makes me. If you look at that self in inventory, you would maybe notice that you fill yourself with all sorts of other things. If you really looked at your life, and, and maybe like I would have to ask myself boldly the question like, did, did I feel myself, did I care more about watching the Red Sox during postseason baseball than I did talking or, or talking with God? And the answer would be maybe, like maybe I really did. <laughs> if you ask Carla out, she would say absolutely he did. And then sometimes I would ask you like, does some of the stuff that you watch, do you care more about that than you care about a relationship with God? Are there some people in your life that maybe point you towards things that they shouldn't, that you care more about that relationship than you do about your relationship with Christ? And I think sometimes we end up filling ourselves with things that point us towards this direction. So here's, here's the thing that, that I'm pretty sure of. After Kate and I kind of talked and, and we looked at this and, and we studied God and we examined ourselves in our own nature is that this is the desire that God has for us. God desires to be in this space with, with us, to, to, to be in a worshipful experience, to feel like we are, our, our prayers are answered, that we are in the presence of God. Yet God is willing to meet us here as well. 
So if God desires us to be here, yet is willing to meet, at, meet us and seek after us here, then the question would be, if you find yourself down here, what is it that you're chasing after that leaves you in this space? Because I can tell you it's not God. There are other things that, that leave you in this space. And maybe it's other people, maybe it's other things, or maybe it's yourself. But earlier when I talked about Peter, right? Peter denies Christ three times, and, and there's kind of that tragic moment, right? Where, where Peter, like, the rooster crows, and he realizes, like, oh, crap. Like, Jesus said I would, and I said I wouldn't, and I did. And he has that guilt feeling. And he knows what's going to happen to Jesus, and he has this overwhelming guilt but then there's this really, really cool moment where, where Peter is out on the boat doing what Peter did because he went back. I mean, the fact that Peter was on the boat was kind of a submission to the world because Peter being back on the boat fishing was saying that he gave up on the Jesus movement and said, I'm going to go back to my old life. So Peter's on the boat and he sees Jesus walking on, on the land out on the beach and he pulls a Forrest Gump and jumps off of the boat. Y'all get that reference, right? Okay, good. Jumps off of the boat and swims inland and meets Jesus on the beach. And they have this reconciliation moment where he's standing face to face with the living God. And Jesus forgives them. And they have this moment of reconciliation where he's face to face with God. And, and to me, that moment, that moment kind of is this. Because I don't really necessarily know that when the psalmist wrote, um, I'm so full of answered prayers, whether he really meant, he or she really meant or not, that all of their prayers had been answered. But more than likely, it was arriving at a place of just knowing that when I seek the God that seeks me, God will meet me in that place. God is always seeking after me. God will meet me in this place just as God will meet me in that place. So am I turning? Am I focusing myself so that I could live in a place of saying, all of my prayers are answered because I'm, I'm standing face to face with the living God. I'm in the presence of God because I've sought after God. So I wonder tonight where maybe you would find yourself on this line. Where would you place yourself? And as you head to your small groups tonight, that's, that's the main question we want you to talk about in small groups tonight is, is where are you here? And, if, and we challenge you, if, if where you are is like right here tonight, like, thank you, Kate. Um, <laughs> boldly claim that. Because part of what we believe as a community is that you can help each other. And encourage each other. If there's someone tonight that says like, I'm most definitely in that place. The encouragement is, God is willing to meet you in that place just as God is willing to meet you in this place. And maybe if you're here, that is so awesome. Maybe you could describe what that feels like to some of your friends, what that's like for you. And you can also kind of give them tips and tricks of how do you stay here? How do you, like, what do you do during the week? What do you do at night? What do you do in the morning so that you're in this place instead of this place? Who do you hang around? What do you fill your time with? What do you fill yourself up with? Yeah? Why are you giggling at me, Aaron? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Let me pray for us. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks tonight that... Um,